If you walk by, you'll miss out on a good trade. Sit with me, Alexander. I've got something to tell you. Ugh, fuck it. What is the rumor? A caravan of Asura make camp in the still sands south of here. We've tolerated them so far. But their leader's a greedy profiteer. He steps out of line, I'll gladly send the whole camp packing. That's fair enough. Sounds like the Osirim awesome are taking quite a risk being out here. Maybe I should talk to them. I know what they're doing. No nonsense, just train. <laughs> Come on. You look geared up for battle. Well then. Oh, a headache. <laughs> it hurts. My feet hurt too. It's a snake! What are you doing? What are you doing? Come on! and take them out. This looks like this one gear. What are they doing here? I must 
have set up other ballistas in the area. Just gotta find them. I've already used that ballista. I should look for others in the area. There's probably other anchors set up in the area. I need to find them. Use them to take down that tonic. I should weigh it down enough. More machines. I need to hurry. Where's the next one? These fucking weapon does. Pride is still to my soul. Fortune favors the bold. We found ourselves one of them tall necks, served up on a platter, all alone in this big, wide, empty desert. Runda's anchored, slings are too sluggish to catch them smaller machines. But this dull, hammered fella moves nice and slow. If today's test runs goes well, We'll strip him down, ship him for all he's got, and skedaddle back to the claim, and more salvage than we can sell. Good day gone bad. Stock log. Bloody parchment. Glimpse uh, dis distributed by columns. Scribbled uh, over by irregular writing. Gundup is dead. I cut some of the machines with the anchor, but they slashed me good. If anyone finds, finds this, whatever you do, do not, for, for Spark's sakes, no matter how much you still headed brain tell you to, 
mess with the damn scorched out tall neck. You've been warned. This big guy. But if I can override you, I can figure out what needs fixing. in the map. Yes it did. to steal aren't you a jewel in a junk heap excuse me hold the hammer i know you you're that nora <laughs> the savior my savior right in the nick of time the name's poor guff delvesman chief delver and leader of poor guff's expeditionists and purveyors of fine delvewares what am i saving you from exactly death and despair my steel flame friend see this grand expedition here has had a, a minor setback. Not far from here, there's a secret tunnel. A passage of the old ones, lost and then found. 
Me and half the crew came through first. The other half was supposed to follow right after. But days later, only one man turned up, shivering like a frog in chill water. Only thing we got out of him was that death and darkness chased them as the tunnel collapsed. Died with his eyes wide, he did. I've been to the tunnel's eastern side. The way was blocked by rubble. There was also a body. One of your Delvers, I guess, but no sign of the rest of the crew. Keep your voice down, will you? The rest of the crew's already spooked. They're refusing to press on with the Delve until they're assured a way out of here. You lost half your crew and you're worried about the Delve. We gotta make their sacrifice worth something, right? And besides, now that you're here, Maybe our sand-stranded days are over. Help me get that tunnel reopened, and I'll cut you in on the Delver's fee. What do you say? Was there a Karja traveling with your expedition? A man by the name of Amatis? We always pick up a few travelers on the road. A Karja here, Banu there. Never learn their names, though. They don't stick around, though. But I have a scout who might know. Likes the whole getting to know people thing. He's right over there, chatting up that Kaja Huntress. Don't remember her joining the Delve, either. Thanks. So this camp, it's your base of operations? What operations? The plan was to move further south once the rest of the expedition joined us. The Delve is right out beyond those dunes. But now the crew refuses to budge until this tunnel mess gets sorted out. They've even given this place a name. Camp Nowhere. I think they're mocking me. Yeah, I think they are. <laughs> How did you learn about this secret tunnel? The art of the Delve, of course. A Delve is only as good as his no sense for good sights. All right, fine. I heard about three Osram who knew a way to bypass those bloodthirsty Tanakh. Tap the untouched Delves of the West. So then I may have employed someone with the know-how for finding and following. A spy. Look. If the rumors are true, there's enough delving to employ a dozen operations. But someone has to take the first plunge, establish a base camp, set up a reliable supply route, guard the site against machines. Figures the awesome would turn sand into shards, I guess. Exactly. Hmm. Care to explain why I found a bunch of awesome nearby trying to strip a tall neck for parts? You don't say. So out of all the untouched delves in this desert, they went after a tall neck instead? Guess they weren't that bright after all. Weren't they part of your expedition? That's what I thought. But no sooner we got out of this side of the tunnel, they struck out on their own. Turns out, they only joined so they could learn the tunnel's location. Well, looks like the secret stayed with them to the grave. They were killed by machines. Ha! <laughs> so they got what was owed. Serves them right for meddling with the gentle old tall man. Huh. Oh. What do you know about this area? Well, north of here, you got those vicious Tanakh. I heard rumor they drink blood instead of water. That's how they survive this wasteland. And south, it has it all. Death, desert, and the delve. Imagine, if you will, a vast grave of the old ones. Ruins of twisted metal concealed by the sands. All guarded by machines. So fierce that you'll wish you had a flock of glint hawks swooping down on you instead. Not even the Tanakh venture into the ruins' depths. Only the bravest explorers dare enter. I've been down there. Have you now? I've yet to lay eyes on the treasures myself, but I will, eventually. I'll see what I can do about the tunnel. <laughs> My savior. For the crew trapped here with you, not your delve. One and the same. That it, over there? That it is. Oh, and while you're at it, would you mind keeping an eye out for my lockbox? The second crew was supposed to bring the rest of the supplies and belongings. I'd hate to lose it to the wilds. It was hand-carved by my dear old ma. I'll bring it back if I find it. I'd appreciate it. Good luck, Still Flame. Looks like we have company. What's it say to you? Have I got news for you, Red? Something I could use on here. I upgrade one of my weapons. But these are weapons I don't.
tell Korga this is a bad idea. Enemies cower in fear. There's the entrance to the tunnel for the merchant. We need to find his missing expedition and clear a path back east. The tunnel's blocked. No sign of the missing expedition. I'm trying to wait a bit further in. Could be a little girl with my fire room. Let's get this fire room out of here. Someone's still alive in here. So you're real. Thought I was dreaming. What happened to you? A terror in the dark. The world shuddered. A machine? Never got a look. The caravan. Rest easy now. Sounds like something big attacked the missing expedition. I better press on. <laughs> Mom, get your eyes over here, Josh. I need to get to the safe first. I need to get to the safe first. Josh, no! We need those supplies. It's close by. Leave them. Uh, I know this tunnel better than anyone, Mom. I work here. There's time. Bad practice.
they were attacked by some kind of terror. I don't think it was these flowers. I'm supposed to shoot that. Use my phone. to make it for Oh shit! I'm not giving up.
far. Stop following me! Shit, I ain't got no blueberries! Oh, fuck. Ah! 
Starts walking instead of fucking aiming, dude. Fucking dumb. There's like no health whatsoever here, dude. So fucking dumb. That bitch is just sitting there. Should hit it with fast ammo. He's at full health! What the fuck? That makes no sense! Why the fuck are you walking? This fucker 
Get that full hell, dude! Get out of here. Where? Oh my god, that makes no fucking sense. Hitting This bitch is gonna kill me. It makes no fucking sense to be here. Not gonna fucking attack? She can't fucking aim. Hello? She won't attack, dude. What the fuck? she wants to attack now? Yeah, hold up. I'll be back for that ass, the fuck? Around camp, Talana and I were trying to find should be around here. Stupid shit, dude. How the fuck are you gonna respawn me there without my health? And then respawn the fucking the fucking shit 
full fucking health. It makes no fucking sense. Fuck out of there. Have I got news for you, Red? Ignoring me again. I, they need me to kill that bitch, but because I died, because I died, like, they won't give me my fucking shit back, like, which makes no fucking sense, like, that makes no fucking sense, how are you gonna respawn me back without health, and fucking respawn the fucking, the fucking creature back like that, and expect me to take him on, like, that makes no fucking sense. Make it make sense. Stupid. Fuck you mean, huh? I'm coming back for that ass. The fuck you mean. Bitch. Shit. Doesn't make any type of fucking sense. Can I try these open? <laughs> Fucking stupid bitch. Clap the middle cheese. I fucking am. The fuck?
Fuck. Shit is spinning. Oh, that that fucking hurt him pretty good. I hear him, but I can't see him. Oh shit! <laughs> Fucking scared me! Oh, he's dead? Oh, that's one more breaker. He's fucking dead. Get alive. the fuck out of here. The officer must have entered the canyon on the eastern side. I'm gonna take a look. Fuck, dude. <sighs> Anxiety. <laughs> Is 
That was bullshit, though, man. Like, real fucking bullshit. A letter written in rough but uh, readable glyphs. Hey cousin, I've been thinking about the decision to come along to the desert. I just want to let you know, I get it. Not every Ulceram is a born Delver. And at least you're being upfront about it. I'll tell you a, uh, I'll tell you a story. Last year, my crew gathered a barren light for our first foray into no man's land. This lone Karja, uh, yeah, lone Karja came, came walking up real fancy and loud he was, using all kinds of big words. He was, he was on a solitary quest to research the cannibal to the Tanakh horde. Gave us Delver, gave us Delvers the stink eye, yelling that Forged dirt like us shouldn't try to hinder an an adventure of immaculate repute repute. Oh uh, shit! But when he got to the gates, the air rushed out of the bellows. He started uh, chatting up the guards about no what no man's land is really a, really like. Got got an earful. Plus, some rumors about the terrors of the clan lands. By this time, the old fellow had gone white as brew foam. He kept breathing about, uh, bleeding, bleeding, yeah, bleeding about the risk of all, uh, of how valuable he was, calling himself the greatest scholar in the in the land, and a jewel of the sundom. Uh, really worked himself into a lather. When the guards offered to open the gate, he nearly chucked his breakfast, howling about how one step in the west meant one foot in the grave. Eventually, the captain got annoyed and had him pack off back to Meridian. You, you know who that was? Well-traveled Aram, the famous explorer. Yeah, so don't feel bad. As long as you're honest with yourself, nobody can hold your choices against you. And remember, you came as far as not so well traveled around it. I'll see you when I get back from Porgov's Porgov expedition. What you mean, Yapaso? The fuck? 
That was such an annoying fight. That was an annoying fight. An unfair fight, actually. And then once I died, that was really unfair. Does this have the code? Hey mom, you were right. I, I couldn't even reach the safe. It was total mayhem in the tunnel. Explosions and everything. So all that stuff isn't going to do me any good. If anybody finds this, take it all. The dark code is 2054. Instead, I'm stuck here with two families. I took them into the maintenance room for shelter. A six-year-old just spilled uh, our water by accident. I'm almost out of battery. No reception. I don't think anyone's coming for us. I hope you're better off than me. I. Oh, damn. It's 2056. Two zero two zero five four. Fuck you mean? Where I get the six from?
Damn. I didn't see the bodies here. There's nothing here. I'm just gonna fast travel over there. Less another day. Don't be greedy. Just go. You'll figure it out on the way. I don't, I don't know why. I thought that's what I read. 2056. I don't know why. I, did I say that out loud? Was it 2056 or did I say 2054? I don't know, but that's weird. That also only came to one and I were trying to find should be around here. You're back? How's that tunnel looking? I found the rest of your crew. One of them was still alive. For a while, anyway. Turns out a rock breaker attacked them as they were making their way through. Poor Saz. Many roads lead to Adelva's end, but that's got to be one of the worst. Well, I took care of the rock breaker. The way's clear now. Ha <laughs> ha! I knew you could do it. And, uh, you didn't happen to find my lockbox now, did you? Here you go. Spark in the dark. Is there nothing you can't do? Here. Your fee as promised. Now that the threat's gone, I'll have the tunnel shored up and cleared out. Then I can send for another crew, get this expedition going proper like. Ha! Ah, onwards to the delve! Hmm. All right. Time for the main mission. Should I run back? Some... Should I run back? I said two zero five four. Okay. Damn, Anyone? why am I thinking of the number it's sixty nine? I mean, number Before nine. I left Landfall, I overheard a couple of navigators talking about a problem with one of our ships. I don't know what's wrong, but it could be an issue when it's time for us to sail home. That doesn't sound good. We'll keep an eye hey, on you. Hey, look at that. Next time I'm in Landfall. That's it? That's how you were holding, you dumb bitch? Oh, I have to worry about running out.
I mean the number six. What? What happened? Oh fuck. I am not trying to fight these fucking hoes. Do you s <laughs> dumb bitch? Specific song oh, you're playing. Damn this heat. Which concert and what specific song? Has that song always play always plays when we go out? Or what? Yeah, I'm thinking about we don't talk about Bruno. I don't know why. I don't know why that song got stuck in my head right now. I don't know why that song is on my head. Is it heat of the moment? Heat of the moment. <laughs> I would have lost my shit if he's fucking talking about Bruno and Tonight shit. The settlement. Might want to stop for supplies. So is the heat of the moment or what? What was song would it play? Carry on my wayward son? I like to do more blueberries. Food sources. Yeah, like medical berries. I need to create a job for that. He was singing along to it. Oh my god. I'm like, I don't know why Carry On My Wayward Son came onto my head. They're just trying to, I think they're just trying to like, not troll, but like, they're like, oh, like, you know, I think he loved that role. What? Oh. Actually, we're going to go to the main quest. Fucking quest for me. I see you, Jeff. 
the fuck out of here. I already did one of your quests. I'm gonna do the main story now. Does she know if it's a magic show? Ah. Tell her that you can learn how to like fight against these supernatural stuff, man. Monsters, vampires, you name it, they know it. So, we're fighting immortals from the stars now? Alright, so. I didn't do anything from the main stuff, like I just got there. I was supposed to just Welcome go back. already to insert, uh, what's his name? Aloy, I know your experience in Thebes was unsettling, but we have a new problem. Did something go wrong with Beta and the rig? Will we be able to transport now you to Now we're here Gemini? with the new mission. The rig is complete. The problem is Hephaestus itself. It has accelerated its proliferation throughout the Cauldron Network. Increasing its power. But with your subfunctions restored, we can still succeed, right? Correct. But the net effect is that absorbing Hephaestus will take longer than previously calculated. How long? Even with Omega clearance, my current estimate is that the merge will take 35 hours. And each hour increases the risk of detection by the Zeniths. Two cores. Two overrides. What if the merge were carried out by two clones of Elizabeth Sobek, both armed with Omega clearance? How long then? Half the time? Hephaestus would be unprepared for the simultaneous labor of two operators, <clears throat> in addition to obvious synergetic efficiencies. Calculating. It would reduce the merge time to approximately 4.5 hours. Okay. Varl, it looks like we're gonna need Beta at Gemini. Do you think you can convince her? Uh, I don't know, but I'll try. What about our diversion? Are the pulse generators ready? Only a final test remains. I am Ooh, confident that won't be able to handle two bitches to at the same time. The pulses will mask our activities at Gemini from the Zeniths. Good. As long as Aaron can operate one without shooting himself in the face. Hey, Loy. You better get down here. Beta's in bad shape. Okay. You fucking run and slide down. Where, bitch? Aloy. I tried, but it's impossible. I don't think anything will convince her to go. We don't have a choice. Good luck. Beta, you have to come with us. It's the only way. It's one mission. The most important one. We need you. Tell me why you won't go. What if they... What if they take me back, alone, in a cell again? A slave. Forever. The only way we can end the risk of that happening is by stopping the Zenus for good. And in order to do that, we have to get Hephaestus. The Zenas are a threat to everyone, Beta, not just you. So find your courage. That's easy for you to say. You still have no idea what they're capable of. I told you from the beginning we'll never beat them. It's hopeless. Beta. Leave me alone! You don't understand!
You're right. I don't understand. We have the same genes, the same mind, the same heart. So why can't you find the strength to do what has to be done? Like Elizabeth would. Don't you think I've thought about that? I don't know what piece of Elizabeth I'm missing. I don't know what you have that I don't. I look through all the data from your focus. You were raised as an outcast, shunned and isolated just like me, so what's the difference? What's my defect? you, trained you, but he was never warm or loving. The day he died, the day he gave you that charm, he was going to abandon you. He wanted me to embrace the tribe. But then he gave his life for mine. He loved me in his own way. And that was enough. What did he feel like? It was like Having the strength that was always there. It's still there. Even now I hear him in my head when things get bad. But it looks impossible. Look deeper. And then fight like you can win. Find another way. I'll go. You're right. I'll only be safe from them when we succeed. But you have to promise me one thing. Yes, of course. If it goes bad, if the Zeniths find us, I don't want to be their slave again. Do you understand? Okay. Promise. I promise. I could use as much time as you can give me to study up on the merge, to make it as efficient as possible. I'll be ready when you are. something you wanted to talk about? Talk to you later, Beta. Bye. I would like to have one of those focus. Have one of those images of your friend or loved one. And you could holographically display them and standing in front of you. I don't think that door had power before, but it looks like it's malfunctioning. That makes me feel some type of way just having that. Looks like some kind of holographic in space.
this leads. Display the holographic in front of you. Oh no. The door won't open. But maybe if it had power. Yes, it was. I'm quite certain that it's for me to show you. I know that. But if there were two of me walking. All right, let's do this mission. It's probably going to take me a while, too. Hello again, Aloy. Hello, Gaia. Hello, Aloy. Hey, Gaia. So, uh, me and Beta, I guess you heard what happened. Yes. I am continuously impressed by the complexity of human relationships. Despite the unpleasant circumstances that led to your quarrel, I am pleased to see you have both found an agreeable resolution. Well, two heads are better than one, right? Yes, I believe so. Are you ready to depart for Cauldron Gemini? You really got popcorn? Or we can hey, look at that! Conversation you got your, you like. your, your crown back. Your, your follow thingy, majingi. You mentioned that the superstorms have subsided. Is that ether at work? You yes. are the lead that. Thanks to ether's capabilities, weather patterns in the local region should mostly stabilize for the time being. Well, that's a relief. Be nice not to have to fight my way through a storm anymore. I will continue to stabilize the atmosphere for as long as I can. Why did Aether take up residence in an ancient war museum? As with the other subordinate functions, Aether needed to install itself on a processor with adequate storage and power. The one in the museum appears to have been sufficient, given that the holographic displays were still active. So Aether was assured it could stay for as long as it needed to? Correct. Though it is curious that it chose a place surrounded with the ancient ruins of aircraft. Maybe it also felt at home there. Have you been able to make use of Demeter's functions? Yes. I was able to mitigate most soil conditions and restore a temporary balance. You should notice less rampant plant growth in the area. Maybe that'll give Plainsong's fields a chance to recover. Unfortunately, recovery in that area is unlikely without the assistance of the Utaru's land gods. I have discussed this matter with Zo. I believe we may have a workaround. I believe Zo will want to explain the plan. Okay, I'll check with her when I can. 
There's something I'm still trying to figure out. Why was Demeter using flying machines to distribute chips. metal flowers? In its I got pretty hungry state, right now. Demeter was still have a burrito left against over. a robotic swarm that would Probably devour that all done. plant life. It thought the Pharaoh Plague was still happening? It feared it would come again. As part of its directive oh. of receiving Prepare yourself for this mission, because I'm probably going to die maybe it three, four times. It plant life at all costs. But you and know, considering it had try not to. to proliferate, I expect you will continue to find the fruits of its efforts for some time. That's a good thing I have the code to dissolve the vines, then. So, once Hephaestus has been recovered and merged, you'll regain the capacity to mass-produce machines at cauldrons around the world. Yes, and to program their behavioral routines, or even control them directly. So you could build an army of machines, attack the Zeniths and take them out. It is in my nature to take any and all necessary steps to preserve life on Earth, human life above all. So yes, once I have been empowered with the capacities of Hephaestus, I could design, build, and command such an army. Given the nature of the far zenith threat, doing so may be our only option. I must admit, however, that I have misgivings about using such technology to kill, no matter how aggressive the enemy. That's good. It means you have a conscience. As Elizabeth intended. Indeed. Were you able to make use of Poseidon? Yes. Many rivers, streams, and lakes associated with the regional watershed have been detoxified. As a result, red algae growth levels have seen a marked decline. According to my data, however, it appears a localized occurrence of red algae continues to persist near the coast. Maybe I'll look into it when I can. So, Poseidon spent the last 20 years hiding out in Las Vegas. From the data I found, it seems the city had an advanced water reclamation system. Is that why Poseidon went there? Most likely. In an effort to protect itself, Poseidon sought out a safe harbor where it could access water supply functions. There, buried and encased in a protective dome, it could guard against any threats. Like three Osirum showmen? I suspect that was not the first time it felt the need to repel trespassers. The missing subordinate functions. What can you tell me about them? Artemis rewilded the Earth with a variety of animal species. Eleuthia was responsible for gestating, nurturing, and acculturing a new generation of human beings. Apollo was tasked with preserving, organizing, and disseminating vast archives of human knowledge and cultural achievements. Unfortunately, all archived Apollo data was purged on the 2nd of February, 2066, by order of Ted Farrow. Ted. I guess he got what he deserved, in the end. Yes. An igneous conclusion to his pathological narcissism, impulsive tendencies, and instability. All three of the missing functions have already served their purpose, or were prevented from doing so. Do you still need them? Restoring their remaining elements would increase my heuristic processing density, empowering my overall function. Unfortunately, as we now know they are in the possession of Far Zenith, attaining them in the short term is very likely impossible. I guess our best shot of covering them is by taking over the Zenith base. Cat, like, we'll need a and a bunch of combat machines so to do good. That. Correct. Okay, people. It's time to head out. I'll get everyone together.
I hope I don't get copyright for this. Just to protect myself. in place. Booting up. Beta, Aloy. I am fully installed on this core and ready to connect to the Cauldron Network. It's good to hear your voice. Hmm. Errand, everyone. Fire your pulses and sound off. I'm at my Cauldron. This thingy, it's blinking. Did I do it right? In position at my cauldron. My pulse generator is blinking also. That means they're working. I'm in position and mine is too. Mine as well. Okay. Radio silence until I give the all clear. Signing off. Gaia, let's cage the beast. <laughs> Connecting to the cauldron network now. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Elizabeth Sobek, Alpha Prime, activating Omega Clearance. Clearance confirmed. Initiating containment sequence. Fuck. 
I have a bad feeling about this. I shouldn't have died there. Why did I die? Come on, man. Hurry up. For all stay here. Protect Beta. Got it. Be careful. Stay back. Yeeted. <laughs> Bitch. Every day is a new day. Come and spend some time. Yo, my hair though. <laughs> it's the it's the way it just flopped on me. <laughs> Someone told me the other day at work, like they're like, dude, with that you having your hair in a ponytail like that, well, it looks like here. you're a USC Protect fighter. Beta. I was like, what? Got it. Be careful. Stay back. Hey, boy. Oh. Oh. Come on, dude. Get back. Everybody. Oh. 
You okay? Still breathing. Aloy. Where's the other fucker? Aloy. Hephaestus can't escape, but it must have fled. Deep. Deeper into the facility. I'll drive it back here. I'll get the cracked core fixed in the meantime. Okay, I gotta chase after no one ever has Aloy needs Force help. it out of wherever it's hiding. For fucking Make it retreat to the core. Everyone always asks for help. Kind of production chamber. Festus is up to something, all right. What, what kind of machine is it trying to build? I don't know, but I'm gonna shut it down. I think those metal carriers were the ones getting materials from. Oh, I think that's where Festus is hiding too. Let me think. 
What if you bypass the processor? Connect it to. I think that could work. I think it could. I might be able to catch a ride on the rail. Go over the shields.
managed to disrupt Hephaestus' control of the node. You should be able to override it now. Nice. Thanks. So, so you vision at night? That's funny. Like, I couldn't see shit. Like, if that's how you see, baby, I'd rather fucking... I'd rather drive for you at night than you driving yourself. And that's fine. I'm like in super busy right now. Sounds like it fled to another chamber. Well, it better not get comfortable. Instead of me fucking fighting him head on. Energy containment failed. Send the over wind. Great. The fastest cover the floor with lightning. What the I gotta fuck? Find a way over it. Hey, Lloyd. More machines keep coming. Please tell me you're getting close. Yeah, I'm working on it. I've been smashing through a lot of machines on my side, too. I guess Aaron's missing out. Anyway. I'm making progress on the bypass, but I, I need something to hold the cyber module What's together. Right? Maybe a ligament from one of the machine carcasses? Right. Oh, or some luminous braiding. And you could reinforce it with a conversion cylinder. For increased connectivity! I, I think... I think we can do this, Amor.
Oh, here we go again. Oh, that doesn't feel good. I'll try to get your access back.
Sounds like a squeaky toy. I'm just looking for health right now. Places to hide. Uh, Aloy, I just registered a huge energy surge back in the production chamber. Something big is happening. Here too. Everything's glowing. The machine the Festus was building. It must have finished it. It's powerful. I'm almost done with the core repairs. Should, should we come to you? Maybe I can. Disrupt the machine if... No. Just stay where you are, okay? Handling the machine's life.
fucking die, dude.
about to die after this. Fucking annoying. Uh, there, there should be one more note to override. You know Good. what I? You know what Stand I keep by. forgetting to use? I'm sending Hephaestus back to you. On the top right corner, it says critical boost. I keep forgetting to use that shit. Hold on, look. Right up there. You see that? I could be I could have been fucking using that shit. That would actually fucking help me more. But I'm not fucking using it. And then this shit too, look. And right in the center, right here, right right here in the little center, right here. Shit. Oh that thing. No more hiding, Hephaestus! <laughs> Make sure it stays there. I'm heading back. And then we can start the match. Because of you, Beta. I'm glad you came along. And you, Vol. We couldn't have done any of this without you. Right back at you, Aloy. No, I feel it in my bones. I'm gonna fight somebody else right now. Fucking dumb. That is so stupid. That is so stupid. How the fuck am I supposed to know that I can die right there? How the fuck would I know? That's so stupid.
friends, I know. Fucking bitch. Passes. The core is stable. Festus is 100% contained. Now we better get started with the merge. It's all set up. Gaia, establish the link, please. Fucking bird. I hate that bird. Well, hello, redundant copy. You cost us quite a lot of time. Squash that bug while you're there. <laughs> it's the way he flew. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Who? <laughs> Go fly down Get like that. Be in a great deal of pain. I can assure you that we are safe. 
The others can't detect us here. You mean the other Zeniths? You must be Tilda. I wasn't sure if... Beta would have told you about me. Where is she? Alive. And while she isn't where she wants to be, not in urgent danger. We must discuss how to get her back, of course, after you've... shaken off the cobwebs. When you're ready, take the stairs down the hall and, and come see me. In the meantime, I'll make breakfast. Breakfast? Okay. Is that how you made enough money to buy your way onto the Odyssey? Oh, no. I made my real fortune later. Selene and Endymion. She's the goddess of the moon, whereas he's a simple shepherd. Beside her is the god of love, Cupid. So she's sneaking up on him? More like visiting him in secret. The torch that Cupid bears represents Selene's undying infatuation with him. Though the two must remain apart, her love will forever burn. This is Rembrandt painting Jeremiah, a man in mourning. Mourning what? His home. The ancient city of Jerusalem. He foresaw its impending doom, but could do nothing to prevent it. So instead, he saved its treasures from destruction, just as I saved these works. You could say we're kindred spirits. About Jeremiah. If he knew his home would be destroyed, why didn't he save the people? Why save those relics? He tried, but no one would listen to his warning, so he saved what he could. But how did he know? He was a prophet. He saw an army invade and destroy the city in a vision. So it's more like he calculated which side would win a battle. What matters is that he was right in the end. If not for him, all those wonders would have been lost forever. At least this way, some part of his world survived. You know what I like the most about this piece? Even though he's the sole survivor, his home in ruins left with only the remnants of his world. The light keeps the shadows at bay. There's still hope. Precisely. Take as long as you like. Why do you keep the forgery? I've always enjoyed studying the two side by side. Both painters capture light, color, and perspective. But what makes one a masterpiece and the other simply an imitation? The forgery looks... sharper? Good eye. The details are crisp. The contrast bold. It tells us more. 
And yet, we feel less. What's in the letter? Who can say? What does the painting tell you? She's... concerned? Whatever's written in the letter troubles her? Burden. She can't put down. Fascinating. Why go through so much effort to make a fake masterpiece? The forger initially painted under his own name, but found little success. His work was considered unremarkable. But when he took on the guise of Vermeer, suddenly it was celebrated as extraordinary. But it was a lie. And he knew it. Sometimes we struggle to glean what is real and imagined, even within ourselves. The irony of these two is that Vermeer died in obscurity. He had no idea his work would become some of the most precious, most copied, most preserved pieces in all history. And why can't Selene and Endymion be together? Selene took a vow of chastity, promising to never take a lover. So when she fell in love with Endymion, she could only visit him at night while he slept. But then wouldn't she be breaking that vow? Think of it as a forbidden love. Though circumstance keeps them apart, still they find a way to come together, however briefly. Aren't Selene and Endymion cold? Perhaps we should move on to another piece. Shall we move on? A portrait of the painter, Rembrandt's son Titus, depicted in the habit of a monk. I don't get it. Why would someone like you, with infinite resources, care about this painting of... a boy in a hood? It's not the image itself, but the feeling it conveys. The face is bright and defined, but his eyes are downcast, heavy with misfortune. And the background seems to swallow all light. The painting is infused with a sense of loss. I guess I understand how the painter feels. Works of art such as these can often cause us to look inwards at our own lives. I'm sorry about your friend. Had I been able to intervene, I would have. But the risk of losing you as well was too great. Everything went by in a blur. I couldn't get to him. You know, long before holograms and focus recordings, people relied on art to memorialize their loved ones. Because of works like this painting, their lives are immortalized. Rembrandt had four children by his wife. All but Titus died shortly after she gave birth to them. She passed not long after that. Titus became the only family Rembrandt had. Which is why he painted him this way. Indeed. Then tragedy struck again. Disease claimed Titus at 26. It's almost as if Rembrandt painted the future, closing in on him. Rembrandt actually painted several portraits of Titus, but this one has always been my favorite. It's honest. What do you mean? In others, Titus was portrayed in brighter, livelier states, but here, Rembrandt allows himself to express his true feelings. Sorrow, fear, hope, love, laid bare on canvas for all time. Rembrandt's The Night Watch, by far the most famous painting my homeland ever produced. It was commissioned to honor a militia made up of influential citizens. I guess you must have been an influential citizen. In my day but not as influential as you've been in this new world. The militia, they look disorganized. Where other
others painted such scenes in a stiff and stationary manner, Rembrandt chose to show them in action, preparing to march. He wanted them to feel alive. You can almost hear the commotion. Who's the girl in the painting? She's a strange one, isn't she? Bathed in light, though no one is paying attention to her. Many believe she's a symbol of the militia. A physical manifestation of their spirit, if you will. She's not real. What's real in a painting? She's meant to represent the militia's virtue and victory. But I like to think they underestimate her. She looks as if she's seen something. What does she know? What secrets does she keep? There's so much detail to take in, isn't there? What is that noise? Is there a... Is there a Brillo there? Why is there a sound of Brillo here? When I do that? That's weird. That's a weird little audio glitch. The Gust by Willem van de Velde, the most famous of his many maritime paintings. A ship crossing into the unknown. I guess you're familiar with that. Indeed, which is why I appreciate this composition in particular. Though waves and wind threaten to destroy the ship, it perseveres, clinging to the light even as darkness closes in all around it. Where is the ship going? To a faraway land, most likely. My ancestors used ships like these to explore the world, sometimes at great cost. What were they looking for? Anything of value. They were traders willing to face unknown dangers to make their fortunes. But no matter how far they went, they always turned their sails home. So this Von de Velda only painted ships? It was his specialty. Following in the footsteps of his father, Willem the Elder. The two had quite a journey of their own, taking them all the way to the court of a foreign kingdom. Did they ever come home? No, but eventually their lives work did. Mm. Take your time. Hear the audio? No oh, audio glitch. I thought I looked at all the moon already. I see this one resonates deeply with you. Just 
stunning, isn't it? Paintings weren't the only masterpieces of my people's golden age. This is Von Vianen's leaded ewer, molded from a single sheet of silver. What was it for? How like Elizabeth you are. <laughs> Function over form. Its practical purpose was less important than its meaning. Von Vianen created it in honor of his late brother, who himself was a famous silversmith. A memorial? Yes. Such beauty from sorrow. If this you were was a memorial, how did you end up with it? As the pharaoh's swarm closed in, my homeland's greatest museum gave it to me, along with many other works, in the hope that I could preserve them. A masterpiece like this was too important to lose to history. I even considered bringing it with me off-world to ensure its safety. Why didn't you? I took a calculated risk. This vault seemed more secure than the unknowns of space. Besides, I thought someday I might return. A long life after all has its advantages. Now, lo and behold, here I am. Exquisite, isn't it? A lot of weight on his shoulders. I should move on. What? She's pulling out her own hair. What? What do you think of I should move on. Is that like a, a bug or some shit? That's just scary, man. I feel like one of those is gonna pop up on me. How did you find us at the cauldron? And what did you do to everyone right before I passed out? All business, I see. Well, suffice it to say we were keeping a very close eye on Hephaestus, knowing we would need it at some point. Your ruse didn't fool us, and as for my little trick, it was an overload of the senses, accompanied by an energy discharge. Gerard and Eric were only momentarily disoriented due to their shields, but it, it rendered you unconscious while I got you out. Perhaps some breakfast might steady you a bit? I would rather remove that helmet she has on right now. This was your house. The one you recreated for Beta in the data channel you shared. How perceptive of you. Please, this way. After everything your people have done, you think I'm just gonna sit down and have a chat with you? They're not my people. They never were, and especially not now. You shot off into space with them and lived with them for a thousand years before coming back. So what made you suddenly turn on them? Quite simply, this. My old focus. You repaired it? But that means you've seen incredible things. What you've accomplished in two decades of life
thousand years at my back and I haven't even come close. I'm sorry if I invaded your privacy, but I had to, in order to understand, to be enlightened. You, know, you, ain't gotta be right again. you truly are Elizabeth's blood, with her drive, her sense of mission, her integrity. Watching all this shamed me for the company that I've kept. Having seen it, all I want is to help you. Even if it means stopping your friends? Especially so. Please, sit down. There. That's better. Now, we must recover Beta and Gaia at all costs. By now, you must know that Gerard intends to use Gaia to reboot the Earth's biosphere. Remaking this world to specifications that would only suit us immortals. This process will kill every living thing on the planet. He calls it a clean install. Not if I stop him first. Not if we do. And once he and the others are gone, we can work together to fulfill Elizabeth's dream. I'm sure Beta told you that there's a build of the Apollo database on board our ship, a complete collection of human knowledge. With that and Gaia, we could do everything Elizabeth wanted, heal the biosphere, educate the people of this world, uplift them, create the world she imagined. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. From what I've seen, your friends are invincible. I do wish you would stop calling them my friends. And they're not invincible. In fact, a friend of yours has found a way to defeat them. Silence. Oh, he's been a busy bee, building an army powerful enough to crash through Gerard's precious base. Regala and her rebels. Even now, she's preparing a final march on the Tanakh the capital. When she wins, she'll have the entire tribe under her control. Hundreds of warriors and machines to throw at the base. If she's been duped, they'll all perish, of course. But it should be enough to break Gerard's defenses and allow Silence to kill him. Along with all the others. Using the new weapon he's developed. Yes, he's found a way to circumvent our shields. Truly an exceptional man, he's planned for everything except you and me. You see, while his army is battering down Gerard's doors, you and I will sneak in through a back way, one that only I know about, while Silence and my friends are busy battling each other. We'll take back Beta and Gaia. I told you I'd want to help you. My old focus. How did you find it, let alone repair it? When we encountered you at the Hades Proving Lab, Gerard saw you as a redundancy. I knew better. You were a revelation. After your dramatic escape... Bravo, by the way. Gerard and Eric assumed you were dead and gave up the hunt. I wasn't so sure. When the others were busy, I returned to the lab and searched for any trace of you. That's when I found this little treasure. Not easy to repair, but certainly worth the effort. As I watched your life unfold, you were like a splash of color on a worn canvas. What Liz was, and more. Did you show it to the others? Of course not. It was your actions that inspired me to defy them. It's worth noting that if I hadn't found it and watched its contents, I wouldn't have known to save you at the cauldron. You'd be dead. So I should be grateful? If you like. So you know all about me? 
What about you? What would you like to know? Well... Start with your life on Earth. When I was eight, terrorists flooded my home city. Thousands drowned, my parents included. I was one of the few who survived. My guardian sent me to boarding school. Among my peers, I was the strange girl, the orphan to be avoided. All because of circumstances beyond my control. Oh. So we're a lot alike, huh? Aren't we? You are an outcast. But you didn't let that stop you from getting what you needed. Neither did I. I climbed my way out of desolation and used my wits to build a fortune. First from the technical analysis of art and the detection of forgeries. Profitable expertise in those days. But as it turned out, the software I developed was even more useful for counterintelligence. From there, it was only a short step to gathering extremely valuable intelligence on my own. You were a spy? More like a service one could turn to for information. I had to remain anonymous, of course, to protect my privacy. But despite that anonymity, Far Zenith inevitably sought me out. What happened when Far Zenith approached you? They painted an irresistible vision of humanity's future. One where we need not fear illness or death, where we explored the furthest reaches of the stars and thrived. It was only later that I realized that they only intended to bequeath this future to the rich and powerful. By the time I finally figured it out, the walls were closing in, Faro's machines were devouring the Earth. So I accepted Far Zenith's invitation to a birth on the Odyssey. I wanted Liz to come, but she had nobler plans, as you well know. So you didn't know the other Zeniths were monsters until it was too late? I, I knew some of them were, certainly. It, it wasn't until we were off-planet that I understood the true scope of their greed. I was grateful to simply be alive, but the others became obsessed with a kind of effortless immortality. They built a colony where machines serviced their every need, where any memory or fantasy could be endlessly savored in virtual reality. It wasn't life. It was stultifying. I like the colors. Pampered that she has dream on. state. As the decades passed, I withdrew more and more, alone yet again. But this time with eons to consider my mistakes. Now finally having met you, I feel like I have a second chance. To do what? Help you. Of course. To fulfill Liz's dream, which isn't so different from Far Zenith's original vision. A better future for humanity. You said Beta is not in urgent danger, so what are the Zeniths doing to her? Putting her to work. Merging Hephaestus with Gaia. A difficult, time-consuming task, as I'm sure you know. They will compel her if need be, but her life is not in danger. She's the only one who can do it. Because you people made her to be nothing but a tool. Gerard's idea, not mine. They always viewed me with suspicion when I attempted any form of kindness towards her. That's why I created the Data Channel, a virtual place where we could speak in peace. So this channel you shared with Beta, none of the other Zeniths ever found out about it. Gerard believes he's the most cunning of all of us. Even after a thousand years, he still can't imagine that I would outwit him. The channel allowed me to interact with Beta away from their mistrustful eyes. It offered us a chance to be ourselves. Until you cut off all contact. Yes, though it pained me. 
I was worried that our meetings would do her more harm than good. She felt like you tossed her aside. I was afraid the others would find out and punish her. She may not have had the comforts of friendship anymore, but at least I ensured she was safe. I know it seems harsh, but you must believe that her well-being has always been paramount to me. Why did you make the data channel look like this place? I built this house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place. Not just for me, but for the art stored below. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage every bit as valuable as the scientific and technical data being drummed into her. I'm sorry I had to cut off contact, but I'll never regret sharing this house with her. She needed its shelter even more than I did. Beta told me your colony was destroyed. That you came back to Earth because you had nowhere else to go. It's true. After we reached our destination, a planet in the Sirius star system, we spent decades building a new home. The physical constraints of Earth, the boundaries of mortality, gone. To think of what we could have done with it. It might have been a utopia. Instead, we stagnated, absorbed in effortless comforts and virtual realities. It took a cataclysm to finally yank us out of our stupor. What happened? A massive geological event. We knew of instabilities in the planet core, but we underestimated them. By the time the collapse was upon us, it was too late to stop it. Only a few of us made it to the ship in time. We set course for Earth, the only safe harbor left to us. Which you decided to make unsafe for anyone else. Not me. Gerard. He believes it's better to wipe the canvas clean than work around the smudges. No more primitive tribes, no more combat machines, only a blank slate to do with as he pleases. But we will stop him. All we have to do is get into that base. What exactly is your plan to sneak into the Zenith base? We will make use of a lesson I learned from an early age. Always know your exits. In this case, a place where Gerard's new construction meets the ancient foundation, a passage that only I can access. When Silence flings his army at the base, we will enter through this back door, bypassing most of the fighting. The distraction will provide us with a window in which to rescue Beta and Gaia. Once we're inside the base, where will we find Beta and Gaia? Here, in the command center. By then, Gaia will have been reunited with all of its subordinate functions, including Hephaestus. What about the alpha build of Apollo on your ship? A simple matter of recovery, once the others have been dealt with. With that in hand, we'll have everything we need to make this world as it should be. How do you know about Silence's plan? He isn't the only one adept at spyware. You hacked his focus? No, he's too careful for that. But his subordinates? <laughs> Not so much. He gave additional focuses to the tribals he branded the sons of Prometheus. By tapping them, I learned about most of his dealings. The distribution of override technology, the arming of Tanakh rebels, and the secret pact with Regala to attack Gerard's base. But how did he come up with a weapon that can take down your shields? That's the one thing I haven't been able to figure out, but however he did it, I'm quite certain it will work. With it and the Tanakh army, Victory seems to be within his grasp. Such a shame he'll be disappointed. Regala's only interested in killing Hakaro and waging war on the Karja. 
What does she have to gain by attacking Zenith? It's the price she must pay for her war. Without the ability to override machines, her little rebellion would have languished in the desert. So she trades with the sons of Prometheus. Machines to help her overthrow Hikaru. In exchange for an assault on the base. Pride has deluded her into thinking she can actually survive such a battle. And all without ever knowing who the sons of Prometheus really answer to. Yet for all of Silence's brilliance, still he underestimates you. That blind spot is what will allow us to take Beta and Gaia right out from under him. While hundreds of Tanakh are cut down outside. So you knew Elizabeth. What was she like? Liz was everything she was. I see in you, and more. Your ingenuity, your determination, your moral compass. You've managed to distill her greatest qualities and make them your own. I'm not asking about me. Tell me about Elizabeth. What was she really like? The honest answer is that I don't actually know. For all the time that I spent with her, she always kept a part of herself locked away. It was like that from the moment we met. So when you met Elizabeth, she was what? Distant? Aloof? Not aloof. Not exactly. It was a summit in Paris about machine learning. A touchy subject in those days because regulatory authorities were just starting to clamp down on AIs. Liz gave the keynote address. She had already achieved great renown for her work in automated environmental reclamation, but in her address, she was just starting to imagine the next step, an AI-driven system that wouldn't just act on its programming, but actually take responsibility for its sphere of influence. To care about life, not just follow orders. Revolutionary stuff. I was fascinated. And I wanted to meet her for a long time. I watched her after her talk. She had spoken with such moral authority, such empathy. But after yeah, that, she retreated. I could tell she felt uncomfortable with all of her admirers. It was as if giving the talk had cost her something. I didn't want to be a pest, so I planned my approach carefully. So how did you finally approach Elizabeth after her talk? I picked the right moment. The morning of the next day, right as she came back to the conference, she had just had her coffee. She was fresh, rested. It was like she had braced herself for the onslaught of colleagues. I asked if I could walk with her then put forth a question about her talk that I thought was intelligent. Her answer made me realize it wasn't. But she was very welcoming. Almost as if we were previously acquainted. It was only Music halfway through nice. the conversation that I realized she knew exactly who I was. It was quite a shock to me. My business was trafficking in secrets, and I took great pains to protect my anonymity. So that was Liz, perpetually one step ahead. I came to view our meeting as a metaphor for our friendship. She always seemed to know me far better than I knew her. I guess I know the feeling. First four. Now Hikaru and the Tanakh. Your plan would wipe out an entire tribe. There has to be another way. We are in an admittedly desperate situation, but I assure you there isn't. Remember Zero Dawn. Elizabeth's sacrifice. Sometimes many have to die for a new world to grow. If it looks impossible, look deeper. 
Wait. The data channel. It still exists, doesn't it? I need you to open it. Let me talk to Beta. Impossible. We might be detected. It's worth the risk. There is another way, one where the Tanakh survive. But we won't. If the others... If you want to help, open it. Damn. What are they doing to her? Virtual reality dissociation. The manual merge of Hephaestus will take hours upon hours of tedious micromanagement. If she resists the work, they run simulations to induce feelings of isolation and despair. Beta, can you hear me? No. No, look at me. I'm coming for you. I promise. Okay. I just need you to hold out a little while longer and work on the merch. Trippy. I did as you asked. Now I think you need to tell me what you're planning. I'm going to take Silent's army away. I don't need it. Only the weapon he made to penetrate your shields. And how do you propose to get it? Ask him nicely? With Aragala and her rebels, he won't have a choice. We'll be his only option. Only option for what? What did you tell her? Is between me and my sister. We'll be Silent's only option for crashing that base. I'll tell you the rest later. But first, there are a couple of things I have to do. Oh, she called her sister. And what are those? Lay my friend to rest. And then I'm going to use the override that Beta gave me at Gemini to put an end to Regala's rebellion. From the air. Wait. Since you insist on doing things your way, I know of something that will truly help you make a grand entrance with the Tanakh. <laughs> the ancient Horus Titans still possess electromagnetic energy cells as part of their arsenal. Drop one of those on Regala's army and they'll receive quite a surprise. So go, do what you must. I'll come to your base if you manage to bring silence to the table. Not if. When. Yeah. Get your words together. When and I get that bitch. There. Aloy. Aloy, is that really you? Yeah, it's, it's me. Where's everyone else? We're all... We're, we're back at base. What happened? It... it might be easier to explain in person. I'll try to join you there when I can. Okay. We'll wait here for you. It's good to hear your voice, Aloy. Shock ammo is not much use against that.
Just to let you know, I'm now patched into your focus network. Great. I take it the other Zeniths can't hear us? Of course not. And they don't know about your base either, in case you were wondering. I've sent you data on the Horus energy cells you can use against Regala's forces. Reach out to me when you're ready to acquire one. Understood. A cyber attack by far right. Anti-migrant group uh, purity action. Uh, Europe reverse key instructions to the city's new storm surge barriers. Rendering them fully open during a massive extract tropical extra tropical god my fucking god those big ass words cyclone the resulting flood uh cascade through the city in a matter of minutes effectively wiping it from the face of the earth uh quote i was one of the lucky ones quote recall survivor tilda van vermeer uh who was eight at the time of the attack Quote, my family was wealthy. We had a watertight vault and some of our precious belongings. My father locked me inside when we looked for my mother. So, so I waited there in silence as the water rose, praying every moment that my parents would return. They never did. Quote, as horrible as that sounds, Tilda was lucky indeed. In addition to the parents, the flood killed more than 100,000 people, including approximately 40,000 climate refugees from that are corrupted. So this fucker I was hearing the entire time. Okay, well make sure you get home safely.
Let me know when you're home. Pregnant would work well in armor.
Oh shit. I will do much. Doorways tangled. I doubt I can get through. Maybe there's some other way in. A cauldron hiding in the jungle. Should be able to find data to override some new machines inside. Hiding in the jungle. If I can get to its core, I should be able to find data to override some new machines. Oh shit.
why can't I come in? These walls. That overgrown cauldron I found. Maybe this is part of it. Whoa, whoa! Sort of canister. It works. I should be able to reach that ledge now. it. Let's back up. 
Try again. I'll look for higher ground so I can pull on that canister. Climb up to that ledge now.
What are you doing? See me? There's fucking grass here though. How are you not selecting, dude? Head on. Those rails usually carry materials to the cauldron's core. I follow them. I find what I'm looking for. There has to be a way out of this. 
this room. I'm not getting anywhere from here. Did you do it? Supposed to be. The mm, pouch is full, but my pack has room. the shit out of me. side of that shield.
can reach those vents. Oh, okay. Something I can use to get to those vents. I should take a look around. Might find something that can get me up there. I think it'll connect. Not the part I'm looking for. Don't need that. I'm looking for. Oh, <laughs> 
Whoa! Oh shit! Didn't like me touching it. Stop! I'm gonna take that part back. What the fuck? Why the fuck did you drop? Fucking stupid. Fucking dumb, dude. I didn't fucking tell you to drop all the way. Damn, man. I can get back to the core from here. Fuck them, I gotta pull this over here.
puzzle. The whole mission taking this core all the way down, man. Ah, oh, shit.
like the sound of that. I better hurry. Bitch is stronger this time. about to say where the fuck did I put the thingy at
the sound of that. He's actually pretty fucking OP.
Are you working in the afternoon or in the morning? Oh my god, this shit is stressing me the fuck out, man. Like, it doesn't say where I want it to be. And I have to re-fucking grab everything that I fucking need. Plasma damage, fire damage, fire damage, and frost damage. Oh, okay, in the morning. All right. Should be laying fucking traps here. Not water. I don't like the sound of that. I better hurry. You can like blast traps and shit. Try that.
Ah, fuck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I could fucking do it. It's just... Fuck, man. Explosions. I don't like the sound of that. I better hurry. I'm gonna use all the resources I got here.
trying this one more, one more motherfucking time, man. Activate weapon wheel O one and R one. There. Trying this one more time. Fucking bomb, dude. Fucking stupid ass. Oh my god, dude. I gotta do all that shit all over again, man. Fuck, dude. So stupid. I hate that it's saved like that, man.
fuck that up. I, if I fucking die from this again, 